I mean, we're keeping it real here, guys. Listen, I've been good, right? We got time. I've, <laughs> I've kept it clean, and Ted knows I can go there. Mally Runcal, 49 and a half. When do you turn 50? I turn 50 in January. How's that feel? You know, it's funny because I don't feel what 50 is probably supposed to feel like. I don't know what that is because I don't feel old. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm kind of excited about it in a very weird way. I mean, I never kind of looked around and said, oh, I don't want to get old because the, the people in my life, you know, on my, uh, my Filipino side, um, we're, we're kind of wild. <laughs> <laughs> and we kind of, you know, have a lot of fun and, and, and there's a lot of, you know, when we're together, it's, it's a party and it's singing and it's dancing and it's embracing life. And so, you know what? Bring it on. <laughs> Not afraid. <laughs> I also have to say, I see growing older as um, a huge gift, you know, as a huge blessing. You know, I, time has always been um, something that I, you know, really did not take for granted because I spent my entire childhood, you know, kind of worried about my, my mom who was sick. My mom was a very, very feisty, shocking, feisty, fierce, beautiful, loving, you know, woman. And um, so, you know, she was diagnosed with breast cancer before I turned one year old. And um, they gave her six months to live. And she lived till I was 17, you know? So to me, growing older was, a gift from God, you know? So I try to think of it like that, because, you know, it's not about, you know, uh, what you look like, right? She says as she's putting on makeup. <laughs> you know, like turning the same age that your mom was yeah. when she died. Yeah. And it is significant. How old were you when your mom? I was 26. She was 52, so I think, like now I'm 44 and I'm already thinking about like, wow, it's gonna be a big deal to like turn the age that she was when she died. I am the exact age my mom was when she went to go be with the Lord. You know, she was 49 and a half and I'm 49 and a half right now. And it's really, um, it's a very intense, feeling when I look at, you know, our girls and I look at um, the life that we have and the gifts that we've been given, I can't imagine, you know, leaving right now. So it makes you, it makes you cherish every minute for sure. Yeah. Can you talk about why you became a makeup stylist? My connection to makeup has something to do with my connection to my mom. I mean, it, without a doubt. I am a uh, first generation Filipino. Uh, my parents came over from the Philippines. They actually met here. They were both doctors. So, you know, growing up, I just wanted to be a doctor because I wanted to be like my mom. Now, my mom was super glamorous. She was super uh, effervescent and joyful. And when she walked into a room, it literally just like lit up, you know, like a, everyone would turn and look at her and just and because she had this joy. And of course, being a little girl, it's like, oh, because she's a doctor and she takes care of people. And that's what that was about. It was actually not what it was about, right? It was about her, um, her joy and her, her faith and her 
gratitude for every single day. And I think that's where that all came from. So I wanted to be like her. So that said, I was like, well, I'm going to be a doctor too. Well, my mom honestly was having none of that. And she would say, oh, don't be a doctor. Don't do that. Go do something very fabulous. Like go be a movie star or something. And I was like, really? Okay. And so I would sit in the room with her when I was... Um, she was doing her makeup and, and getting ready every day. And, um, and it, it really inspired me. She loved the process of putting makeup on and, and laughing with me and, you know, talking about, okay, so here's the deal. So if you use this eyeshadow, it will really bring your eyes out and make your eyes look bigger. And she wasn't a makeup artist, right? But she just, she really inspired me to uh, love makeup. She was always my inspiration, you know, in all things. So that was uh, where that came from. And I followed my dreams and, you know, so blessed to be here. By the way, how amazing are my shadow sticks that I literally had no eyes on. And um, now I have a full eye look. Just one quick stick. Have your girls shown any interest in makeup? No. <laughs> <laughs> not, not like makeup like, you know, I would call, I guess, my kind of artistry makeup. I wouldn't say that. Um, but they are very, very artistic, all of them, and they love cosplaying, and they love, um, you know, uh, getting dressed up in different looks, and many trips to Mama's dressing room to get their makeup done. Yeah, but it ties in, like it's, yeah. it's a creative. Sure, 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 yeah. yeah. They are finding themselves, and you know, as, a, as parents, as a mom, you know, uh, I really feel it is our job uh, to encourage them to find out truly who they are. I think, to me, that's the best way to honor you, your family, your legacy, to honor God, to honor what, you know, the gift of life. They're all pretty awesome. Listen, we cannot complain. We are a family of, uh, we always say we're the five little musketeers here to kind of try to change the world in our own little way. Instilling positivity into teenage girls can be difficult. How do you do it? That's a really good question. We started with them at a very young age when it came to instilling positive energy and uh, gratitude and thanks and um, you know uh, we do have a little saying around the house where we'll say not complaining just explaining <laughs> because if something is not perfect or what you exactly want it to be what we have to realize is that it is a part of the journey it is a part of what you know this beautiful amazing roller coaster of life of what it is my mom's passing, my mom's journey. In a very weird way, I see it as a blessing and a curse. But it really did force us to live every day as if it were her last. And in that journey, we found so much grace and so much gratitude and the love of the little things, you know? And I think that that's something that we all have to we all have to remember that the little things are the things that we're going to remember, you know? So that's what we do. Positivity, gratitude, speaking wonderful things about yourself, it's a muscle. Every day, you just got to work it out, and it will become a part of your life and great things will happen. You know, the minute I wake up in the morning, as soon as I open up my eyes, do you know what two words I say first? Can you guess? Uh, contour and highlight? Close, very close. Um, I say thank you. 
Ah, uh, yeah. And I say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you all the way to the restroom because that's <laughs> what you do for us when you wake up. One of my jobs for my mom was whenever they would be, you know, taking her out, you know, to the hospital on the stretcher, or we were taking her for whatever reason she was going through something, it was always like, honey, pack my makeup, pack my makeup. That was, that was my job. I remember some of my friends saying, well, that's so weird. Like, she's going to the hospital. Why does she need her makeup? And, you know, we never really talked about it, but it's something that I have to say, knowing her as well as I did, yes, it was for her. It was for her to feel good and feel like she was going to be okay and maybe perhaps a sense of normalcy, right? And also, it was something about wanting to make other people feel good. When people would come to visit her in the hospital, I remember her always wanting to look good. She would ask, you know, I don't want to wear that hospital gown. I want to wear my nightgown. So I would bring her her clothes as well. And she would do her makeup and I would always help her, you know, when she was sitting there. It had to have been because when people came to visit her, they didn't want, she didn't want them to feel sorry for her. Hmm. She didn't want them to feel like they should be sad. My mom, and I know this is something that I... I've gotten from her, just to want people to feel good. You know, want people to feel okay and not worry about, um, not worry about her. Mm. And that was what that was all about. So she equated that feeling of putting her makeup on and putting on her lipstick and putting that face forward mm -hmm. with um, care and love for other people. So that's probably where I got a lot of it. To me, that kind of describes you as a makeup artist. Do you need to take a break? <laughs> yeah, it's like you really seem invested in making people love how they feel and how they look. Yeah. It's a, it's an amazing legacy. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's something that, um, you know, I guess talking about getting older, right? You, you realize, again, why the things that have happened to you have happened. And it's because um, it's all forming the human that you're meant to be. And if you really look back at things as awful as they can be, they really do make sense, you know? They make sense. And while obviously I, I really, 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 really wish that, you know, my mom was still here today with all of us, I know why I was given the journey I was given, you know? And if it all else fails and you're crying, just put a little highlighter on and everything will be okay. <laughs>
kind of like their their force field, right? All of their um, all of their strength and all of the beautiful things that are about them that maybe they don't know. I love digging in and kind of rolling around in it and getting all juicy and all in love with it and then bringing it forward. If you want to, you know, wear makeup and it helps you feel good and helps you feel like you've got that little pop in your step or there's something a little extra going on, that's amazing. Um, if you don't want to wear makeup, don't wear makeup. It ain't that deep, <laughs> you know? It really isn't. Listen, if there's one thing that my mom instilled in me and that I try to instill in all of my clients and something that I, Phil and I are passionate about instilling in our girls is, you are a badass <laughs> okay? You are a badass <laughs> male, female, non-binary, trans, in between, whatever you are in your moment, this moment right now, you need to know how fierce you are. Maybe now you're becoming a little bit of my therapist, but we'll just go there. That's what this show is all about. There you go. I do think a lot of my over-the-top happiness, joy, gratitude does come from never wanting anyone to think that I'm not grateful mm. in this moment, right? It actually makes a lot of sense. You know, I spent my whole childhood never wanting my mom to see me sad because I never wanted the last minute to be. Yes. Right? I remember feeling that way very, very vividly when, yeah. when my mom was sick. I know. So you internalized all that, right? And you took it all in. And you said, I'm not going to let this person who's suffering already mm -hmm. see me suffer. So I'm just going to take all of that and smush it down into my own little body. And then... Um, and that's not healthy either. Sure. Right? So it's a balance. And another thing I want to say about that, if you don't express your pain, your hurt, your depression, your anxiety, your sadness to somebody, somehow it's going to find its way out. And it's going to come in the form of a sickness. It's going to come in the form of a mental illness. It's going to come in the form of acne. It's going to come in the form of some sort of way because it's got to get out. You cannot hold it in, you know. I know because all my hair fell out. That's another conversation. <laughs> I have three questions that sure. I ask everyone. Okay. What was the last makeup tutorial you watched? The last makeup tutorial I watched was one of my own because my friend Ted sent me um, a run through of Mally Makes It Better, which is this great, awesome show that you can stream today. <laughs> what is the most used product in your makeup kit? Oh, that's not fair. That's like asking me to choose my favorite child. You have to give me at least three because <laughs> my shadow sticks, hands down, the fastest, easiest way to get your eyeshadow on, get out the door and look fierce. I'm gonna say my dark circle corrector. I'm telling you, it is a game changer. It is not makeup, right? It's I always call it skincare with brightening and hydrating pigments because look at this. Pretty much everyone I've talked to on camera has used that. Love it. And then I just have to say my face defender. Translucent powder is the enemy. It makes you look old. It sits in every pore, every fine line wrinkle, makes you look, makes, ugh, it just makes you look so old and cracky. This is what translucent powder wished it was. So what I like to do is I take it, I either use a sponge or I just use my finger and look, 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 look. Oh yeah, baby, that's what I'm talking about. What beauty tip did you learn from a woman in your life? Obviously, I have to say my mom. First is gratitude is beautiful. The other thing is just smile. 
even sometimes if you don't feel like it, if you kind of feel a little crappy, which guess what everybody does, even me, this positivity preacher, sometimes I can have a day too, honey. <laughs> but you know what? Smile it out. <laughs> I'm going to stretch my butt. And there's for Ted.